Hello. We'll begin. So we connect to Ujjaya breath. Aligning the center of our head space over the center of our pelvic space. We'll just start a process of gradually, consciously elongating exhales. Start to recruit the low belly muscles in this movement, this exhalation movement. So the exhale is slowing. As you're engaging with low abdomen, Releasing the low belly, inhaling, feeling breath into the hip bone area, the navel area, the low back area. Just do about two more breaths like so. And today is a energetic piece as a practice in the subtle body. Inquiring what's the quality of energy that I want to work with throughout my cells, throughout my body, that permeates our attitude, our thoughts, our behaviors, so again, what's the quality of energy that you most want or need or would delight in for the next hour or so? And for this to be a, a working energetic practice, it's important that we not just develop a word so it's not quite like a, man a mantra. We're not going to recite a word, but whatever quality of energy you most need or want in the next
next for the next hour plus what does that taste like how does that go how do we enact that how do we structure ourselves to invite that how do we start to breathe that quality generating it absorbing it behaving it expressing it and then start to do that right now with your breath even in the seated posture that we're in is there some subtle postural adjustment that helps you explore that quality of energy maybe it's softening the eyes or maybe you feel the eyes open up a little bit more widely One of the things I find so empowering about this work are these constant embodied visceral reminders that we are responsible for our experiential, our internal environment. Right. Well, this, the response I have, the quality of energy I'm working with at any time is for the choosing. So let's reach the right leg out and the left leg bent, heel near groin. We're out. Right. Inhaling, telescope the ribs up and then exhaling, we'll go left hand behind back Grab onto um, a waistband or your thigh. And the right hand can simply palm the floor. I'm not too worried about a, a super deep fold. Really, I'm just hinging, letting my pelvis turn around the thigh bones. So I don't, I don't end up leaning that much. Now inhaling, spreading breath through the uppermost ribs, left clavicle or collarbone. Exhaling, relaxing the ear the middle ear, relaxing jaw joint. Relaxing and softening through the left side temple. And while all this head and neck area is softening, Reach out through the legs, the thigh bones. There's quite an activity about the legs, right? Spreading the right foot bones. Kind of sending that left leg into the earth. Starting to engage the muscles of the right leg, straightening, strongly straightening the leg. Even if the knee doesn't fully straighten, you can start to engage the muscles engaging. We'll start to open up some of the joint areas. And opening up left hand, release, inhale, set that hand down and walk the trunk up. We're just gonna get into that little bit of shoulder area. Let's switch sides. Setting the left leg out. Mm -hmm. 
Inhaling, expanding the ribs. Exhale the right hand behind the back, latching onto thigh or waistband. And I'm just palming the floor. Very subtle um, angle of my torso. One of the things that occurs when we just try to move our trunk as low to the ground as possible is that we'll often, not all the time, but often these ribs, and on this side I'm pointing to my left side, will often collapse. So just to avoid the collapse and to work with the breath, I'm staying relatively upright, just enough to tip my head to the left. And feeling breath permeate this, these chest muscles around the collarbone. I'm actually feeling for a subtle movement under the collar or through the collarbone. With each breath, the collarbone has the capacity to just slightly turn. So I'm using breath to free up the neck muscles, some of the chest wall. I'm feeling if that collarbone does or can remember its subtle turning movement. Collarbones do move with breath. And opening up right hand, release. And we'll inhale, coming up, upright. All right, let's land back. We'll be doing this um, form of head to ankle where we help one of our, one foot to the inner thigh of the other leg. So it's making like a figure four or like a tree pose um, configuration. And I'll talk us through. Inhale the head and the shoulders off the ground, breathing down into the low back. So it's not just the head that's lifting up, it's the breath descending and spreading into the low back. Shift the tailbone. And as we're exhaling, let's straighten the right leg, picking up that left foot, plugging it, touching it to the inner right thigh, pressing, reaching out through that right leg, draw the low belly down. Inhale, letting that up. Returning knees over hips, curling tailbone, exhale, left leg out reaches, touching right foot to inner left thigh, just like a tree pose. Pressing leg into foot, foot into leg, sending left leg out, sinking the low belly in and down. Inhale, letting up. Knees over hips, breath in the low back. And if you don't feel that, just cycle through, take another breath. Exhaling the right leg out, the back stays on the ground. That's to be one of the biggest reasons we're doing these. 
pressing leg into foot, foot into leg, reaching outward with the back, staying on the ground. Draw the low belly down. Inhale, knees back over hips. Breath into low back each and every time. Holding, keeping that back to ground. You feel there's some abdominal pressure. Exhale, the left leg out, the right foot touches inner thigh. Press, outreach. Feel the inner left leg, inner left leg reaching out. Drawing, sinking the low belly in, relaxing the head in the left hand. Inhale, letting up knees over hips. Breath descends, spreads into the low back behind the hip bones. Exhale, the right leg reaches, foot to leg, left foot to right leg, pressing. Reaching out, draw low belly in. Inhale, knees over hips. We'll do just uh, just that left side, I guess. Curl tailbone. Exhale, left leg reaches. Right foot touches left thigh. Press, reach out, both thigh bones. Pull, sink, low belly in. And then inhale, easing up. Set the head down. Exhaling the feet down. And if it occurs to you that you can breathe more fully, more deeply into that waist area, belly, hip bones, low back. Go ahead and breathe in that way. Feel how the organs are getting moved by this deeper quality of breath. And as you're feeling this quality of breath moving the organs and the abdomen and the structures thereabouts, start to draw in that quality, that quality of energy, just touching back into it. Does it delight you? Does it soothe you? Is it like a balm? Is it, is it kind of like a fire? Maybe you're choosing this quality that kind of gets you going. All right, turn on to a side. Let's set up dolphin. So we're going elbows, knees. And once the forearms are placed out in parallel, spread the heels of the palm. Exhale, toes curl under, pressing the knees up, dolphin. By shifting weight into the left arm, we we'll start to take the right hand away from the ground. I remember you can always leave the arm down. You can leave the fingertips near the ground. I 
And we'll switch sides, setting the right arm down. We'll take the left hand away from the ground. You can set it behind back or keep it hoveringly near the ground. It's a strong move, so if you need that shoulder support, you might just opt to keep those forearms down. Allowing the neck to relax. And we'll set the hands down, lowering the knees down, exiting dolphin. Inhaling arms, or sorry, uh, pardon me, hands under shoulders. Exhale, downward dog. Straightening arms fully, wrap the shoulders. Wrapping the shoulders as you are doing it in your body. Feel the distinction between ribs, shoulder blades. And we'll give this a couple moments play. I usually say move your shoulder blades, but what if you move your rib cage? That might be the difference for you. You might find it much more accessible to breathe and move the rib cage up between the shoulder blades. But the point is the same that we're supporting our shoulder girdle with muscle muscle from the side, the armpit area, the chest area, and that the blades aren't just smushing into the spine, which can actually feel really nice, and it's a wonderful way to do downward dog. We're just going to create a little more structured support for the shoulders this way. By warrior two. Inhale, let's step the left foot forward first. Left foot forward, warrior two. And exhaling, feel the leg bones kind of spiraling, turning outward. Try to draw the circle with my hands or external rotation as you move the leg bones outward away from pelvis. It's just a couple little subtle moves that tends to bias and help us feel right into this groin and hip crease area. Reverse warrior, exhaling the right hand to the right leg, the left arm reaches overhead. And bearing breath down, again, the descent of breath, the spreading of breath. Can you feel that in the left hip area? So this kind of fleshy area above the left hip bone. And can you feel that breath in your low back, just, just by the sacrum, just near left side spine? And 
Now inhale, taking left arm up, over, back to warrior two, arms in eagle, exhale, left elbow over right, left over right. Gliding the shoulders down, aligning the center of head space over the center of pelvis. So if you feel a little smooshed in the low back, it's probably because I'm pushing, you might be pushing the belly forward. As I reach the thigh bones out, I bias, I may feel a heightened sensation in the inner hips, and that's to allow tailbone to find it downward, and that will start to decompress, it'll start to lengthen through the low back. So it's, can I let my hips feel this so my low back doesn't have to take it? Okay, and there might be a little stretch, a little movement in there. You might even have to adjust the left foot position a little bit so that you can deepen sufficiently into that pose and use the, the strength of the butt, the, the um, kind of getting into the tissues of the legs. Right triangle, inhale and wind the arms, straighten the left leg. Um, this is where I'll adjust my feet. I turn that or bring that right foot in some. Exhale, left hand forward, torso lengthens. And setting that left hand down. Right arm lifts into the sky. And I'm going for a little bit of a chest opener today. So I'm lifting, also reaching back. And that quality of energy rides on your breath. So we're getting that connection, quality of breath, quality of energy. It's a practice in selecting our response. So our response to this moment, being on our mat, the response of feeling the sensation is we could respond in any way that we choose. It's just a practice in that, in that kind of selection and curating of our own personal environment, our own personal kind of permaculture. And we're slipping into an ostrich. So inhaling, we'll bend that left knee. I have to adjust the stance again, kind of stepping my right heel, my right foot back somewhat. So I'm um, back in a warrior one stance, interlacing the hands behind back, exhaling, hinging. Again, I'm lengthening my ribs away from the pelvis and either putting the ribs on the thigh or hinging the torso inside the thigh.
And inhaling, we'll take the hands down, release them, hands to ground, exhaling, step left foot back, and let's lower all the way down to the ground for cobra. And no, this cobra will be three breaths. So it won't be a quick in and out, it's in and linger. <laughs> so hands set, reaching legs back, inhale into the abdomen, go into the low back. It spreads into the hip bones, lifting up the chest. Remain uplifted. Exhale, using the palms, start to pull gently. The heart starts to lengthen forward. Inhale into the back. Spreading breath through the organs and under the heart. Once more. And exhaling lower. Take one inhalation deeply into the low back, feeling it with the low back. Hands under chest, exhaling downward dog. And inhale, right foot forward, warrior two. And as you're exhaling, start working with the legs right here. There's a spiraling, this external rotation. a bit of an outward reach. And that allows, if we're making that space in, the, in between the leg bones, the pelvis can then kind of shift, turn sideways, so you see this a little better. It allows the pelvis to shift Backside finds downward. Okay. That changes how my low back and my organs are, right? Reverse warrior. Inhaling left hand down, raise right arm, exhaling, leaning left, side bending to our left. So as I'm now biasing that right side, keep reaching down with the breath. There's a lot of, mm, there's strong tendency for us to elevate or feel our breath primarily higher up near the collarbone. So we're taking many opportunities to almost like reverse direction, if you will, but to feel breath moving down, feeling breath in other areas beside the shoulder area, so the hip bone, the waist, the fleshy part of the backside near the spine, the navel area, Inhale, take that right arm up, over. We'll stay in um, warrior two, arms and eagle. Exhale, the right elbow over the left.
So the pose is helping us reveal these areas of the body, yeah? And the quality of energy that we're choosing to work with now contacts these revealed areas. So can you find that quality of energy? Because if you feel yourself going mentally or emotionally or energetically kind of flat, that's what we're feeding our soil, our cells. <laughs> Inhale, unwind, triangle, we'll straighten the right leg, walk that left foot in as needed, and then exhaling, reach through the right hand. So the right side of trunk lengthens forward. My ribs, they're not collapsing on each other. I'm, I'm working with those legs, reaching, reaching, and set that right hand down. And you start to feel that draw or that snugness might be pulling through that hip bone area or the, and then feeling breath, reach the hip bones. The low back, lifting that left arm up. To reveal, open, suggest opening through body then bring in that quality of energy that's most needed. So that's an, an, an enactment. It's an internal environment enactment. And now ostrich, inhaling, bend right knee. To adjust the stance back into a warrior, interlace hands. You don't really have to come up and down for this. I'm just staying low, connecting the hands, exhaling, completing this hinge. Lifting the chest bones away from pubic bone. So the front side of body is lengthening. So if you're folding and you feel the front side of your body collapsing on itself, lengthen out. So this is why we're breathing into the belly and the back to give us lots of support for lengthening. Being able to breathe into the hip bones and the low back is hugely supportive to the spine. Inhaling, take hands down to sacrum, release them, set them to floor. Exhale, chaturanga, stepping back, lowering. Okay. Inhale, upward dog, please choose cobra. If that's better for your wrists or your shoulders or your low back. Exhaling, downward dog. As you're fully straightening arms, deeply inhale so the ribs expand. Not just kind of sort of, but really feel for where is that limit, if there's a limit, <laughs> to that inhalation. Keep going with it. Keep following the breath out and out. As you're exhaling, explore getting empty. And we don't just have to stop exhaling just because we usually stop exhaling somewhere. You can keep exhaling. 
Some people exhale for 50 seconds. <laughs> Inhale the left foot forward, warrior two. Okay. And do a little bird wing in warrior two. So that means I place my arms, my upper arms, against my ribs or as near to my ribs as I can get. So my armpits are rather kind of sealed up. They're kind of closed up, my palms facing up. Inhale, ribs into arms. And now exhale, squeeze the arm bone toward the shoulder blade bone. So feeling that contraction more on the back side of the shoulder than the front side. And then easing up on that squeeze, inhale, relax the armpit area, ribs expand into the arms. And exhale, the arm bones condense toward the shoulder blade bones, lengthening up through the neck, letting that tailbone find downward. Let's do one more, inhaling, letting up on the armpit squeeze. And then exhale, gathering the arm bone toward the shoulder blade bone. And to release, inhale, draw the arms out to side, extend. Extended warrior. Exhale the left hand down, the right arm reach overhead. So I'm lengthening my left side ribs, lengthening it along the uh, thigh bone length. In other words, if you're feeling bunched up in the left side waist, lengthen through there. If you need to get your hand on a block to do so, great. Props are for help. Stretch that right leg, stretch it back into the earth. So in this moment of exposing ourselves, <laughs> I'll wash that quality of breath through the right side of the body, through that right axilla, through the right side ribs, right side waist. We've cared enough to connect to a quality that we most need or we most would delight in, and now we bathe ourselves in that quality. So that quality of mind kind of suffuses and permeates in the cells, our posture, our psychological structures, our internal chemistry, So there's structural mixing, there's chemical mixing, there's energetic mixing. Bring that quality deeply into your cells. Interlock, inhale, the right hand beside the right hip. Reaching the right hand behind the back, exhaling, lift the left hand arm under the left thigh.
and release. Inhaling when we set the hands down, moving into lunge, set the right knee down. So we're working archer and lunge. Oops, pardon me. I'm lowering a strap from right hand to left hand. Right elbow up, left elbow down in archer, lunge. What's interesting and cool, I think, is even if you don't have an experience of where deeper is in the body, we certainly can select for it and start to feel our breath kind of reaching in, probing and inquiring what is deeper, where in the body is deeper. So as I'm breathing and feeling, like I don't have to have a, a memory of what deeper is, but I can start to feel with my breath in that direction, really quite, quite effortless. So how do you start to experience your breath and this quality of energy seeping in more deeply, more deeply? kind of an enhanced presence. You can feel yourself showing up in your body more fully and more wholly, which I think is so super cool. And release. Inhaling, hands to ground, exhaling, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhaling, downward dog. Let the legs strongly draw the sit bones back. Almost as if the leg, the strength of the leg might lift your palms off the ground, <laughs> lengthening, lengthening the sit bones, being drawn back, drawn back. The spine lengthens, the arms reaching, almost being lifted off by those lever-like legs. All right, let's do this on the other side. Inhale the right foot forward, warrior two, bird wing. Exhaling, gather the arm bone toward the shoulder blade. Again, my palms are up. The contraction is felt more on the back side than the collarbone side. Okay, inhaling, letting up the squeeze. And then exhaling, squeezing again, arm bones toward shoulder blades. Lengthening through the neck, open. My legs are kind of doing a similar move that my arms are doing. It's a little bird wing of the legs. Let's do one more. Inhaling, arms out to side. Extended warrior, exhaling right hand down, left arm overhead. So as I'm reaching to the left leg, I'm further exploring the openness of this left hip, breathing that breath, that delightful, empowering, illuminating breath into the left hip. 
So bring it there. There's a whole left flank, the left side is being stretched. All those muscles on stretch by the reach of the left arm. Inhaling, breathe into that left side ribs. So the organs and the rib muscles are suffused in this exquisite quality of energy. So very specific quality of mind being woven into the cells and into the tissue and into the posture. And the armpit and the upper back, inhaling, expanding the ribs. You really have to stay with the inhalation. Keep inhaling, feeling that under the shoulder blade, under the armpit, under the, just the base of the neck. Interlock. Bring the left hand beside the hip. And on exhale, the right arm reaches under the right thigh. Hear the breath. Hear the hear the breath. Making each breath lingeringly long. That's the one of the functions of ujjayi is to help slow and so deepen our breath. Release. Blank. You're right. Lunge. Archer. I was thinking something else. Here we go. Left elbow up, right elbow down. And release. Now we're complete. <laughs> Inhale the hands to the ground under the shoulders. Exhaling Chaturanga. Inhaling upward dog. Exhaling downward dog. Allowing the brain and the head to relax down. It really helps with the fluids to kind of move through the brain and the neck easily. When we release, it helps fluids move. It, part of that circulation. All right, gently set knees down and we'll set up for Shavasana. Revealment. 
part of this yoga process is revealing. Kind of we're showing ourselves to ourselves. And the postures are just little probes and instruments for that revealment. When you're feeling your breath, connecting to your breath, where, where are those places that you can feel more readily or more granularly? Where is there more resolution or more depth or more fineness? And we've been energetically, even chemically bathing ourselves in some particular quality of energy, which you can now explore. What is the result of that in your body, in your experience? To keep mixing a quality that I know I want or need and to keep mixing that into these layers of body and posture and psychological structure. That I'm revealing, that I'm lifting, that I'm discovering. How is that? How does that occur to you? And if we did, and we do feel some change in our internal environment, amen. <laughs> Let's bend knees. We'll turn to a side and we'll press up to seated. Namaste. Right. See you soon. Thank you.